For those of us who have braved the worlds of the Souls-like genre are well aware of how difficult these games can be. Iconic bosses such as the Looking Glass Knight, Orphan of Koss, that stupid f***ing big green swamp monster, I... <sighs> Sorry, I uh, kind of lose it when I remember the 50 plus times I attempted that boss fight. All that to say, Souls-like games have had their share of hard boss fights, but today I want to talk about the hardest boss battle of all, the photo mode. It is truly despicable that From Software hasn't added a photo mode to Elden Ring, and I'll be honest, I kind of naively thought they may add one in Shadow of the Erd Tree, but I was sadly mistaken and we are yet again stuck with no way to properly take screenshots. So I'm returning with another video to talk about some tips I have for creating your own photo mode, plus some general love for the new DLC. First of all, I just have to say that the DLC is downright gorgeous. If you watched my previous video comparing Arkham Knight and Suicide Squad, you'll know that I'm a firm believer in a strong art direction over graphical fidelity, and Elden Ring is just that. It's not the most impressive game in terms of graphical presentation, but every single frame is like a painting. Every corner I turn leads to new wonders and new sights to behold in the Lands of Shadow. Hats off to the devs once again for creating a memorable world that is well worth exploring. So if you didn't see my first Elden Ring video, let me do a quick recap and comment on how my views have changed since then. My previous tips to get good screenshots included getting the balled up emote after respecking with Renala for the first time and turning off your HUD. I also mentioned in my video that you could use your telescope for a clean frame, and while this is still occasionally useful, I would now recommend against doing that. Not only does much of your screen real estate get lost, but often with distant structures in Elden Ring, the rendering is really low res. Look at this distant building here. Yuck. It's best just not to use it. Now a new technique I picked up on was the simple use of camera physics. More often than not, you can find the side of a wall or rock and simply exploit the camera to create a clean shot. Some things to keep in mind though. Make sure to de-equip any large swords. I keep a knife on hand to switch to just so it doesn't get in the way. You see, if you have a massive sword, it totally blocks your view. Another thing is that some objects that you might think will catch the camera just don't. Trees and many smaller objects simply vanish if you try and do this camera trick. You need to find yourself a solid wall to really do the trick. Now, what do you do if there is no wall, but you simply must capture the shot? Well, that's where a little bit of editing can come into play. Previously, I mentioned cropping the photo so that your balled up character mode is out of view. And while this is still possible, again, you lose a lot of screenshot space. Now, I would recommend using an application that can fill that space in. If you have Lightroom or Photoshop, you can use the generative fill tool to clean up an image. Or if you don't want to use your life savings on Adobe's dumbass subscription service, check out the Affinity apps. They're like $70 a piece and they're only a one-time purchase. I use these on a daily basis for photo editing and Affinity Photo in specific has a great tool that also can fill in an image. While it's not as seamless as Adobe, it does get the job done and most people would never notice. So will someone ever be able to conquer the photo mode boss? No. Only From Software can do that apparently, but since that's likely never going to happen and with this DLC supposedly being the last thing for Elden Ring, I think we tarnished must make do and carry on. Let me know if these tips were helpful and please share with me some of your screenshots on Twixter at Photo Mode Review. Until next time, see ya.